<laughs> All right, thank you for watching. I'm Michael Gaines, and with me is Tom Merritt from CNET. Hello. Buzz Out Loud and Current Geek, and oh my god, how many other forever, damn things yeah. do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch, uh, CNET and otherwise. TomMerritt.com is usually the easiest way to do yeah. it. Yeah, so you're, you're currently doing some new stuff with Scott Johnson. Yep. And you should have been handing out Obey Henry stickers today, and you did Yeah, didn't. yeah, I, I, I feel bad now. I, sh I, I ran out of my stash. I need to get some more That's from right. Scott. Mm -hmm. Scott? <laughs> so, we were talking yesterday uh, at the Buzz Out Loud meetup about the relevance of South by Southwest and how some of the, the big sites aren't covering it as, as we thought that they would. Like in, in previous South Bys, there have been like the Twitter coverage, the Gowalla, the Foursquare. This year, it just seems to be all about nothing but Gowalla versus Foursquare and a few little things. I mean, have you seen anything big come out of it this year? Yeah, it was interesting. Like At the time when we talked last night, I had a story in the Buzz Out Loud lineup about how South by Southwest was irrelevant because I hadn't seen a lot of coverage yet. Mm -hmm. Overnight this morning, started to see some more stories about stuff coming out. There was the Opera Mini Browser story mm -hmm. that they were showing off. Uh, there was the AT&T coverage story that we talked about. So I don't know that it's that they're undercovering it or they're covering it in a more Austin way <laughs> where, <laughs> where they either write the story in advance, which the story in advance was all geolocation. That's all anybody talked about beforehand. Right. And then they wait until the real news happens, which is at the parties. You know, you go, yeah. At South by Southwest, you go out to the parties in the evening and that's where you talk to people. That's where you find out what's really going on. Uh, and, and then you can, you can find out, okay, this is the interesting stuff. So it may just be a quirk of South by Southwest that the, the coverage comes later, but it's still kind of a trickle, don't you think? It, it is. And you you would think that, like for example, when, when Chrissy who's holding the camera, when she and I were working on the site, I said, I really wanted to get this done by South By because this is really a good place to launch it. Yeah. And the thing is, I haven't seen too many other other even little sites, even the little sites like ours, we haven't seen anything come out of this. You see people handing out flyers, you see, you know, the, the stickers and people covering over like, other people's stickers, yeah. their stickers. But you, I hear no buzz, no pun intended, of, of, hey. of anything else. Uh, well, sticky bits, I've heard some buzz about. That's the oh, yes, that's yes, the, the, the codes, the QR codes that you can scan mm -hmm. and find out what people have tagged. Uh, and that's kind of interesting, but it, it's a lot more involved than, say, Foursquare or Gowalla, yes. where you just check in. And those are old stories. And they're at South by Southwest. Foursquare and Gowalla were already here before. Mm -hmm. So um, I think... I think there isn't a Twitter or a Foursquare no. this year that's kind of overtaking all the mindshare. No, no. Uh, so which do you use, Foursquare or Gowalla? I use Foursquare because I started using Foursquare. Mm -hmm. um, I've used Gowalla. I actually checked in Gowalla here. But it's too much for me. I, it's too yeah. much commitment. And that's what makes it fun for people is they're like, yeah, I like to collect the things and, <laughs> and trade stuff out and really get involved. And it's like playing a game. Yeah. And that, I think that's cool. I, I don't think that's a negative. But for me, it's like that's one thing I just don't have time for. Foursquare is a little more efficient. You get the you badges, which kind of done. keep it fun, but you don't have to really pay attention. You've got that OCD where you want to collect things and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a completionist. <laughs> so am I. I'm going after the Lore Master title in <laughs> Warcraft. Are you really? Yeah. I, I haven't done that. I've, I've done the. Um, uh, the one where you have to the world explorer. Yeah, I finished that one. I, I, finished, I got that. Which was that was an afternoon, but I'm not I'm not doing the lore. But I did do what a long strange trip it's been. Oh yeah, yeah. that's another. It good took one. me I, it I took me a year list. because uh, just side note last year I didn't get it because uh, the random number generator uh, debuff hit me. Oh no, I didn't get it. So uh, you were talking on the show about the uh, about the iPad or did you? Did you say you... I did, better? yeah. I reserved one. Uh, I'm going to go pick it up at the store. So I haven't given them my credit card information yet. I could still <laughs> back out. But yeah, I intend to get one. All right. What what do you want to get out of that? Like, is it is it the, the big iPhone or is it like a portable browser or something else? There's a, there's a situation where I'm at home and I use my iPhone that I used to use my laptop, right? Yes. Uh, but a lot of times when I'm doing that, it's not big enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and and there some of the cases are ridiculous, like SimCity, where I'm like, <laughs> I just need a bigger screen to play this. And and other things are browsing, you know, yeah, yeah. like trying to to look at things on the web, where I'm like constantly moving in and out that I'd like to have a bigger screen. I'm not sure I'd use it for the productivity things. I'm interested to see whether I'll actually use it for video and, and watching movies and podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, to me, it's sort of a test case to see are those impulses I have to use it going to make it worth the money? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to get it. Uh, for one thing, I want to get the books on it, the books in the magazines. Uh, when they said the Wired, Wired, 
announcing that they were going to support it mm-hmm. sort of tipped me over the edge a little bit because my biggest problem was that there was no camera. And I do a lot of video conferencing, and I would like to have a, a portable device where I could say, I, I want to be able to just start this video conference here and yeah. without the camera. I thought, eh. But I've been against the Kindle. I was never a big Kindle fan mm-hmm. uh, because I thought there, there could always be something better. I was waiting for something better to come out. And then here it is, something better that not only allows you to read books, but all these other things Well, and you, can, well. you could still jump into the Kindle store by using the Kindle app on, on the iPad, I, or I, you can stay out of it. I mean, you have a lot more options than you do on a Kindle. I thought of that. I, I've been asking around if anybody's actually tried it on some of these. these I do. I use the Kindle app on Windows, uh, the iPhone, and I have a Kindle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, it works great. The Whisper Sync is awesome. Uh, 90% of the time at mm-hmm. keeping your place. There's a right. couple of bugs that I wish they would work out. Now, my wife has the older Kindle, and that one is not so good with the Whisper Sync. So, oh, okay. Um, so the older Kindle users may not be in agreement with me on how good it is. But I've got a bunch of Kindle books, so having the iPad as my reader would work mm-hmm. for me, although I still hate all of that DRM uh, <laughs> that ties you down. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the big issue in the last few months has been security, especially with the whole Google Buzz stuff and again at South by I'm not seeing a lot of security panels you think that people are just complacent about their their private information or they don't care I think some privacy uh, concerns are overblown Mm -hmm. and the South by crowd reflects a complacency and reaction to that uh, which I think is probably dangerous Uh, where they're like you know what I don't care if people know that I checked in at a bar big deal most people don't care that I checked in the bar and I think they're I think they're right I think a lot of the stuff that's out there on Facebook that's public some photos probably most of the time aren't a big deal Uh, but because of that people aren't probably paying as much attention as they should because Mm -hmm. there are isolated cases Cases that may be rare where they're going to regret mm-hmm. not having to paid attention to their privacy or letting a photo out or things that they don't realize are shared that they assumed weren't shared mm-hmm. that could come back to bite them. What I've been seeing is that people that buy computers and don't completely understand how the computers themselves work, they just never really understand how all these security issues work and then it just bites them in the ass Yeah, later. because there's a, there's a sort of a template to using a computer in your brain that translates when you're using services that you're like oh well that's like the settings in word or you know and if you don't know what all that stuff is then yeah yeah have you had any privacy issues like with google buzz or something uh or do you know anybody that's actually been bitten by that not in any bad way i don't not with not with google buzz uh you know i i definitely have uh i've had a few f- people call my phone number, you know, because they were, you know, phone numbers are not that hard to get, even if they're unlisted. Um, and I, and I've definitely know some folks who've had stalkers and had to get restraining orders and things mm-hmm. like that. But those are people who are in the public, and I think that's more expected. Yeah. I don't know of any more uh, anecdotes than you do, probably, of people who've either not gotten a job because of something that's found on Facebook. And yeah. you know, I, yeah. that those stories are usually well covered, and I think they're pretty rare. Okay. So what else do you have coming up? Anything you want to talk about? Well, uh, you mean at South By? Or? Either at South By or, or you and Scott? Because we're, we're doing, uh, doing another five shows or something. Well, I don't know if this will post in time. We're doing Nom 3X uh, Live, which is a food and conversation I podcast. I heard about that, yeah. Uh, and so you could look for that. Molly and I will be on that. And Jason, mm-hmm. uh, the whole crew. Uh, and then I'm doing Twit and East Meets West this yeah. afternoon. Another Buzz Out Loud tomorrow. Uh, so a bunch of podcasts coming out of South by Southwest that folks can look at. And then uh, next Friday, the 19th, uh, Scott Johnson and I are launching Current Geek Weekly on the Twit Network. So that was the name you picked? Yeah. Okay. We, that's what we finally... We, we went around with all kinds of creative <laughs> names and then came back to, let's just call it, the obvious. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it'll be the kind of stuff we talk about on Current Geek where we focus on one story, mm-hmm. except kind of expand it, go, in, go into more depth, bring on some guests, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, thanks for talking. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, thanks, it. Uh, you can find Tom at tomerritt.com, bol.cnet.com, and a whole bunch of other places. And I'm Michael Gaines for Del Omni. Thank you.